Hello and welcome to Heroic Media. I'm Michelle Bauman. And I'm Patrick Cordova. This week in Heroic Media, find out why thousands of women want the popular birth control Assure taken off the market. Our sponsor, Heroic Media, launches a new adoption commercial for National Adoption Month. And the father of the contraceptive pill says that sex could become purely recreational by the year 2050. Stay tuned for all these stories and more here on Heroic Media. So here at Heroic Media, we explore news headlines that are very uh, foundational moral issues, including family, marriage, and life. And those issues often involve abortion, euthanasia, embryonic stem cell research, human cloning, and homosexual marriage. That's right. So Patrick, what's our first story for today? All right. In our first story, thousands of women who have used the popular birth control Assure say it has ruined their life. This has prompted thousands of women to uh, petition to have the product removed from store shelves. So this is really interesting. There's a lot of twists to this whole thing, but I think the first thing that st stands out with this is that a few months ago, I actually had a friend who was talking about this product. And the way that this product works is uh, there's a little metal coil that they stick inside of the fallopian tube. And then mm -hmm. after a few months of it in the fallopian tube, a uh, tissue grows around the coil. Right. And so the idea is, is that uh, when that tissue grows inside of the coil, that uh, you know, sperm and egg cannot meet, and, mm -hmm. and therefore you can't get pregnant. Exactly. And so uh, apparently there are a ton, thousands of women who have reported very bad side effects mm -hmm. with this. And uh, I mean, all, all sorts of things that you could imagine from nausea and vomiting and menstrual issues and perforations and mm -hmm, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. And it was just, how, how did you feel as a woman? How did you feel about hearing the story? Like, what were your initial reactions? I was, I was frustrated by it and I was upset because I think that a lot of women don't realize this and they're not told by their doctor. They're exactly. not told by, by anyone. And, you know, you have the normal range of side effects that are going to accompany any kind of sure. treatment or procedure or medication, the, yeah. you know, nausea, vomiting, that type of thing. Um, but this, some of these things were very extreme. The debilitating migraines. Uh, some women said that they went into early menopause. Excruciating pain. Joint pain. Um, joint pain, and then organs being punctured, and yeah. um, and the fallopian tubes being punctured, other things being punctured. These devices going missing because it takes about three months for the tissue to really you know, close Fill over, the, over that. Yeah, exactly. um, and so it just like, this is, you know, one woman said, unfortunately, this is something I gambled with and I've made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the marketing on this product, this Assure, and it describes itself as the gentle hormone-free permanent birth control procedure performed in a doctor's office in about 10 minutes without surgery, burning, or the risks of getting your tubes tied. Right, so for somebody, a woman who's looking for, mm -hmm. for uh, permanent birth control, this sounds really nice mm -hmm. because that's what, uh, that's how my friend was basically portraying it. You know, mm -hmm. she was like, oh, it's so nice. You don't have to go under surgery. You know, it's this outpatient procedure. It's, you know, very effective and all this stuff. Well, it turns out that there are a lot of issues with it and mm -hmm. it's kind of sold as like this magic, like awesome right. permanent birth control. And then uh, a lot of the women that have, have experienced negative side effects from this, uh, they feel like, you know, they, they say, that I, I had no idea about right. all of these issues mm -hmm. that could occur. And so it's, it's one of those, to me, on the outside, it kind of sounds like one of those too good to be true, like they oversold this, this thing. And, and, you know, there are some issues pushing it through, through, through approval and everything, mm -hmm, too. So mm -hmm. um, it's just the whole thing seemed kind of shady. So. Absolutely. And the more I looked at this, the more frustrated I got because the, you know, as, as we're looking at this, there are now mm -hmm. over 10,000 women who have signed a petition saying you, this needs to go off the market. And actually Erin Brockovich, the you know, right. famous activist, there's a movie about her. Yes. She, the, the real, real Erin Brockovich, actually created this website to log women's stories and their petitions, right. to, the, just their bad 
experiences with this yep. because, and her actually, her motivation was that she discovered that there were hundreds of women who had gotten pregnant while on this. Right. So it didn't even work necessarily all of yeah. the time. And that's the, one of the dangers, right, mm -hmm. of using contraception because it seems like the, the answer for that, exactly. you know, there's always an answer. Exactly. And it, 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 usually the logical conclusion is, well, if you get pregnant and you're on birth control, the next thing is an abortion, right? Right. So right. it's, yeah, it's especially mm -hmm. dangerous that so many women have gotten pregnant. Right. right. And it, in particular, pregnancy is diff, diff dangerous and difficult on this particular type of birth control. Mm -hmm. And it actually says, the warning label says, um, we don't know what happens. We don't. We haven't studied the risks of if you actually get pregnant, the risks to you, the risks to the baby. But we do know that there's a higher chance of ectopic pregnancy, which oh, can yeah. be fatal for the woman. So Absolutely. you have a higher chance of dying as a result of this. But we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to you know look at that. This is a great, wonderful thing. Right. Yeah. And ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy outside of of the of the uterus, right mm -hmm. outside of the womb. So yeah. And I can imagine how that would occur, right? Because if that tissue doesn't grow in there all the way, which mm -hmm. seems like it's completely possible, you know. Well, a, a sperm or a, a fertilized egg traveling through the fallopian tube could easily get caught in there and implant and then try to grow, right. which is, would be could potentially a very deadly situation for absolutely, a woman. Absolutely, absolutely. And then the other thing that's frustrating about this, you have all these women complaining about it. You think, okay, great. The next action, the next step will be a class action lawsuit. There'll be some kind of legal action. Well, it turns they out they can't because <laughs> there's this, this special procedure. This got this device got pre-market approval from the FDA, mm -hmm. and they do that for certain things if it's needed to sustain someone's life or if it's very risky. In this case, it's it's risky, and so mm -hmm. essentially that exempts it from most lawsuits. So now they can't even go and say, okay, we're going to sue over this. We're going to try to get this product off the market, they can't do that, which is just, I mean, this is so anti-woman and it you is. just look at some of the, it's so shady and as a woman, I think this is appalling and I think there are thousands upon thousands of women suffering out there yeah. and they can't even do anything about it. Right, yeah, absolutely. And and that website, Aaron Brockovich's website is uh, isureprocedure.net uh, mm -hmm. and I just mentioned that so you can check it out because I, I like sites like that because to me it seems like it's coming from a... Uh, non-religious standpoint because sometimes mm -hmm, you talk right. about birth control and things like that and the negative side effects people go oh well you're you know a religious person or a right. Christian so I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say but these are you know, there's clearly thousands of women on here that don't have mm -hmm. some sort of religious motivation but who wanted birth control and who said hey you know I, I thought it would be something safe here's my story here's what happened we have to band together and somehow get this thing taken off the store absolutely. shelves absolutely absolutely you're, you're messing with what your body was designed by God to do right. and you know this also frustrated me the response from the makers of this device when they were presented with all of these things. Mm -hmm. The fact is that the adverse effects that have been reported on the news and online about Assure are known and are listed in the Assure product information. <laughs> so they were like, well, it's out there. That's one of the risks. So, you know, that's oh okay. It was, it was just absolutely awful. And, and I actually went on the website to look at the effects of this product, the side effects. Right. And basically they say, well, we don't know the risks if you're pregnant mm -hmm. and um, this might break off in your body and puncture your fallopian tubes and then migrate around your abdominal cavity and puncture your colon. Just and very matter things. of fact. That might happen. <laughs> um, and there's also my favorite was that you might regret this, especially if you're young. It's <laughs> essentially that's what it said. It said just, it has a warning on there that yeah. the younger you are when you get this procedure, the more likely you are to regret it. So Jeez. there you have it. <laughs> that's pretty, that's, yeah. I think it kind of summarizes how I feel about it. It's just like, I can't believe they're actually doing it's this It's sad. Sort of thing. It's frustrating. It's very anti-woman. It is. All right. What's next? In our next story, a new commercial from the pro-life group Heroic Media features adoption as an alternative to abortion for women facing an unexpected pregnancy. So Heroic Media is a media group that really works to influence people's decisions to, to choose life through yes. media and really understanding the impact of the media on people's mindsets. So this is their second adoption-based commercial. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Last year, I got pregnant, but I was not ready to raise a child. I thought about letting my aunt raise her like she did my cousin's baby, but then I learned there were adoption agencies that would let me pick the family who would raise her and love her forever. A counselor even laid out the steps so I could finish school. I know I made the right decision for me and my baby. All right, very nice. Uh, what, what were your reactions? I, lo I really liked it just showing that this is an option, this is out there, that I think a lot of mm -hmm. women don't realize that this is an option or they don't feel that they have the resources. And so I think it's really important just to get the information out there. Yeah. I also loved how it ended, her, her statement at the end, I know I made the right decision for me and my baby. Yeah, because absolutely. Because that's what the pro-life movement is all about. It's about yeah. loving them both. It's not just, you know, sometimes critics say, oh, well, all you care about is the baby and keeping the baby alive. You don't care about the woman. Yes. But this is what it's about. It's about respecting life, respecting the life of the mother, respecting the life of the mm -hmm. baby, 
loving them both. All so life. I thought that was important. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought that that definitely stood out to me too. One of the things that stood out also was just the kind of uh, very welcoming, mm -hmm. like down to earth nature of it as well. Uh, I think sometimes it's you know Christians get stigmatized or whatever you know like they people go oh uh, you know you have you, you know, you're just gonna try to hit me over the head with the Bible and so I like a Christian organization like heroic media coming out and and kind of getting on the same level as people kind of like Pope Francis does you know mm -hmm. I think I feel like that's how he does with he interacts with people mm -hmm. and talks with people and and uh, it kind of gave it just I thought it was very welcoming and warm and and, and like you said so many women don't get all their options right mm -hmm. and so uh, they, they need to know and I I feel like women want to choose life, you know, but so many times in our society today, it's just an overwhelming pressure to have an abortion. And so it's nice to have organizations like Heroic Media who mm -hmm. can, who can be, be there every step of the way and help women uh, choose life and, and give them the support that they mm -hmm. need. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the hard things. Like the commercial talked about, you know, she's going to be going to school and, and mm -hmm. you know, all this sort mm -hmm. of stuff. So it's kind of like, listen, you can have this baby. You can choose life. Um, you can make the, 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 the good moral decision, but you can also still, uh, uh, you know, have the life that you want, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it, it's kind of a win-win. Right. There. there are definitely sacrifices involved, but it doesn't have to be, you know, it's, it's scary to face an unexpected pregnancy and yeah. you just feel like, you know, what am I going to do? So I think Absolutely. that's important. There's, I, I love this quote about this um, commercial from Marissa Cope, who works at Heroic right. Media. She said, we believe that women deserve to know about all of the options available to them, and we are grateful for the opportunity to connect more women with information and support. And so I think, you know, as we said, we hear a lot of stories about women who who felt coerced either by a boyfriend or a parent or someone at an abortion clinic. And so I think the education, the information, the resources, the life affirming options being presented are absolutely key and that's what's yeah. happening. And the the you know, the heroic media says that there are one million abortions in the US every year yeah. and only eighteen thousand infant adoptions. But there's about three people seeking adoption for every person that's actually adopting. Wow. So there's actually a lot of people out there who want to adopt exactly. and don't have the chance. They're waiting lists. You can yes. get on a waiting list to adopt. So absolutely, you know, the, the, there is there are people out there who want to adopt. There's a desire for this. It's absolutely it's, it's very important that Abs we realize that. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Coming up after the break, an interesting claim from the father of the birth control pill. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Heroic Media. In case you're just joining us, I'm Patrick Cordova. And I'm Michelle Bauman. And for this segment, we have a special guest joining us, Mary Beth Minacci, Catholic speaker and author. Thanks for joining us. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So the story that we'll be discussing today is that one of the creators of the birth control pill has raised eyebrows with the claim that by the year 2050, sex will be purely recreational. Mary Beth, what do you think about that claim? Oh my gosh. <laughs> When I read this story, my first thought was, thank God I'll be dead by then. <laughs> <laughs> the, I read the linked article, and the, it seems like the whole idea is that everyone, it said that everyone will be sterilized, mm -hmm. and their sperm and eggs will be frozen, and so then when they want to get have a baby, they'll just go down to the bank or whatever and mm -hmm. unite their little sperm and egg, and everything will be lovely. And I was thinking... You know, in this world of, of organic everything, yes. and we're trying to, to learn more about how our bodies work so that we can work with our bodies instead of working against them. Naturally. Yes. What on God's green earth? I mean, I was thinking about like the paleo diet. Yeah. About how we've got to go back to cavemen to see how they ate because clearly that's how we're supposed to eat. Right. And I was thinking, I'm pretty sure cavemen basically had their babies from actually having sex. <laughs> I was thinking maybe we need like a, a paleo sex movement. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's pretty funny. It's crazy. It's super. It's all natural. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, it seems like society has just become uh, like we want to control things so much and we want to make everything perfect because like that's one of the things that this article talked about. It, it was like, you know, well, you know, we will uh, have healthier children this way. 
Like, doesn't it annoy you when, when claims are made like that about things like that? Or it's like justifications are made. Like, yeah. this is what we'll get, and it's better than what we have. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's stop pretending, and it's really yeah. about, like, chopping our bodies up and mutilating them nine different ways, all for the almighty orgasm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's yeah. really what it boils down to is we want to be able to have sex anywhere with anyone without any risk of pregnancy. Right. So, I mean... You don't even know how many levels did we stop to think about, okay, everyone will be sterilized. Oh, is this compulsory? Yeah. How is this everyone being sterilized work? Yeah, exactly. And we're going to surgically, so you start talking about the, the side effects to that. Mm -hmm. You start talking about what happens to the sperm and the egg when they go through this mm -hmm. little extra step of being removed and harvested and frozen and then brought back in and reconstituted. I mean, you know, people don't want to even drink like, you know, instant milk. Right. Like, you know, reconstituted uh -huh. sperm and eggs. Right. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of scientific, like biological issues with, with that as well. Uh, we had a guest recently mm -hmm. who brought up some interesting points, like that there was three different types of sperm actually, and they work together. And you know, the reason why you can't just stick an egg and then stick some sperm in a petri dish and then it gets fertilized is because it's not meant to happen that way. Because there's different sperm, and you know, the egg actually calls to the sperm basically and says, "I choose you." And you know, you're forced injecting this. And like you already mentioned, like you're <laughs> the freezing, one I choose like... is in the freezer over there. <laughs> hello, right. hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of complications. Like you said, it's, it's not natural. It's you know? the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. I really. Think I think a lot of it, we buy into this stuff whenever we start talking about pregnancy as being the only or the primary kind of risk or, or consequence oh, of yeah. promiscuity. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, aside from all the, the pregnancy stuff and the, the risk to the, the child and the sperm and the egg and the, you, you forget to talk about, this just means, oh, we're all going to have like totally casual, consequence-free sex. No, this is... So this whole organic thing again, God made this whole thing to work together. Yeah. And you're failing to talk about any kind of emotional consequence, right. about the, the hormones that happen, about the intense bonding that happens, and what's yeah. going to happen to to couples and to individuals and to the, our our souls. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's so, so, so much that's lost in this kind of weird, brave new world thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I made me think of, Brave New World. That was actually yeah. the first thing that I thought of. And one of the quotes from this guy who was one of the creators of the birth control pill, he, he was describing his futuristic society and he said, for them, the separation between sex and reproduction will be 100%. What's your thought on that? It's so sad. I mean, I think about, I've been speaking for years about how the, Scott Hahn says the love between a husband and wife is so real that you have to give it a name. About, right. <laughs> like, you know, I knew a couple who conceived their, their daughter when they were in Bermuda, and they, they remember the time, and they <laughs> say it was Bermuda blue eyes. And, and, you know, what do you got now? Oh, remember when we went, we drove down to the, <laughs> to the bank, and wasn't it lovely? And, I mean, why, why do we want to separate yeah. these things? Why? It's so beautiful that that act of self-donating love between a husband and wife, that's what a child results from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's cool and awesome and beautiful and God designed the system so intricately yeah. that we're gonna run, it's the law of unintended consequences. We already know a bunch of bad mm -hmm. stuff that could happen. We don't know, probably nine tenths of it, but God knows and he's going, oh, don't do this to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. And one of the things that proponents of this say is that that, well, but it's going to reduce the amount of abortions. It'll eliminate them. <laughs> and it's just that sleight of hand from the devil, yeah. you know, the yeah. thinking. Yeah, and I don't even believe that. Yeah, exactly. I People are going to change that. Yeah, you know, but then we had a fight. We drove down to the That's bank and point. it was so romantic and lovely. But then we had a fight and now we don't want this child anymore. Or I got it offered a scholarship and now I can't be it. No. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. Plus, this, this is basing, the assumption here is that sterilization is 100% well, yeah. effective all the time. You yeah. Know? And, and it's, if you if you are operating under that assumption, then what happens when you do get pregnant? That's not even in the realm of possibilities. If sex is totally, totally distanced from from reproduction, then when you do get pregnant, abortion is the natural, the only natural yeah. consequence, the only Not logical. logical. Mm -hmm. And I really start thinking like sci-fi movies, like the one baby. <laughs> <laughs> They're out to get him. Yeah, like the new Superman, <laughs> that Superman movie, the same yeah. thing happened in that futuristic society yeah. where they were making all their babies artificially. Yeah, they don't it's, know what to act or how, what to do. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really interesting to think about but I'll, about everything. And, and, and like you already mentioned, there's so many facets that, that we don't think about. I think 
when people read this sort of stuff, they think of like this perfect, oh yeah, that's perfect, you know, I can do all this stuff. But, but like you said, there's all sorts of different consequences and we don't know nine-tenths of, of, all, of this, all of the things that are involved, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. And it's, I think it's, I don't know, I don't uh, think that this is going to happen. It seems pretty far-fetched, but it's pretty, it's, it's very interesting to see into the minds of some people and how they see the future going. And uh, sometimes it's hard to imagine some of these things happening, but I'm sure there's things that have happened in the past where people go, oh, that stuff will never happen. Oh, well, yeah. And then it happened. Yeah, right? yeah. And everything they thought was going to be good for us, you know, all those drugs that wound up causing babies to be born without arms and legs right. and, you know, margarine. And everybody thought margarine was a great idea. And now it's like, <laughs> you know, devil's poison food. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> margarine, people. Think <laughs> margarine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and one more thing that I thought of too is just, uh, and, and Michelle, you kind of talked about it a little bit, was, was just that you know, there are unintended, like uh, IVF uh, results in, you might not call it an abortion, but a human life ending mm -hmm. a lot of times because IVF procedures don't always work properly. So you have mm -hmm. these frozen embryos and then uh, you know, they, they may selectively choose you know, by right. sex selection or, or go, oh, this embryo looks better than these and then discard a bunch of the other ones. So there, there's a, lo a, a substantial loss of life too. Oh yeah, or we'll these. freeze, you know, that more are fertilized than they expected. So they freeze them for mm -hmm. later and then yeah. they decide they don't want them later and they, you know, take like yeah. spring house yeah. cleaning, clean them off the shelf and throw them out. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Not to mention the pressure to have a genetically perfect child once we start doing, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. like oh, well, I just want this child to have its natural shot. No, no, have you tested it for all these different things, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Very true. All right. That's it for this segment. Thank you so much, Mary Beth, for joining us. Absolutely. When we come back, we'll have one more story. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Heroic Media. For our final story, India's population control is under fire after at least 14 women died after botched sterilizations due to negligent medical practices. So this is uh, pretty concerning. Absolutely. So in India, uh, their population is just I I explosive. It's, it's, it's about to surpass China. Um, it's on pace to eclipse China, rather. And um, the, the government there has had um, population control for decades mm -hmm. in place. It used to be both for men and women, and then men kind of fought it off in the beginning, and then now it's it's just women. And so recently there's been a, a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, some bad news that has come to, to the attention of, of people there. And uh, they, in one instance, they opened up this hospital that had been closed for four months, and they kind of coerced these women into, into having sterilizations mm -hmm. in order to reduce the population. And they do it under very poor conditions. So there was this hospital that was closed for four months, like I was saying, and they used, you know, old rusty, you know, medical equipment and, and uh, prescriptions that had expired, medicines mm -hmm. that had expired, and, and all sorts of horrible things, all in the name of population control. Right. So. I thought it was awful. I thought it was really horrifying to see some of the stuff that was going on inside of these um, medical facilities. And again, I thought this was a very anti-woman story because again, they, they had previously been sterilizing men and woman, women, and now they're focusing on the women. The, actually, previously between um, 1975 and 1977, they actually sterilized forcibly 11 million people in India out of these concerns for population control. But what they did is they took the lower castes of people. So it wasn't everyone that we don't want to reproduce. It's the poor people. Right. And so that, that's, um, that's a horrible thing to do. That, you know, the eugenic implications of that are, are huge. And then now you have, it's, it's supposed to be voluntary. In, the, in theory, it's no longer forced. But there's a lot of stories about women being coerced or women being bribed. And so who's going to take that bribe? The poor women for as little as 20 US dollars right. saying, hey, get sterilized. Which is a so, week's worth of wage for a woman for th in that that part of, yes. the, of the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think that was one of the things that stood out to me that was most appalling about the situation. And uh, it, it's it's just the targetedness of that. Mm -hmm. Like that, it's, that's what really bothers me too, because these poor people are literally, they're poor and also they're very uneducated. They don't mm -hmm. know, a lot of times they don't know better. 
and uh, they, they they don't understand the ramifications of what they're right, doing, exactly. what the implications are. Like what I mean, they they're so poor that they just want some money, mm -hmm. and it, it's really a, a crime against humanity to, to do these sorts of things, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's forced or coerced. I, mm -hmm. I consider it a crime against. Humanity. I think I think there's a very serious question about consent when you have mm -hmm. women that are uneducated and illiterate, and they're running these campaigns saying, "Oh, this is really good for you." Yeah. So the woman, how does she know any better? This is not educate. This is not an educated, informed decision. Right. And so all of these people who are promoting, you know, women's rights and women's freedom and women's liberation, they should, they should be up in arms about this because this is absolutely awful. And yeah. here you have at least 14 women dead, at least 65 hospitalized. And the, the reports of what was going on inside these facilities, one journalist who was there described it as, she said, these operations are being performed very quickly and under abysmal conditions. They were using medicine that had expired, uh, high risks of infection. Women were dying from infections or from loss of blood. They were not given any anesthesia. Um, doctors were performing more than 13 sterilizations per hour, wow. which is actually illegal. The That's government insane. regulates it. But I mean, there's, it's absolutely horrible, wow. horrible stuff. And people should be up in arms about this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but it seems like there's got to be an answer. You know, a as Christians, we, we have to uh, help these people out, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and it's hard to transform the thoughts and, 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 and everything of, of a country, you know, but I think it starts small with the family and then expands from there. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, ha it, it's a question of how do you help these people mm -hmm. out? And there's one organization, Dalit, uh, and they work with these women mm -hmm. and they provide education and health care, um, you know, for these w women in these positions mm -hmm. that had no voice. And so I think that that's one of a, the bright spots in, in that area. Um, and I think we need more organizations like that to help mm -hmm. these women out. Absolutely. And I think we also have to look at the fundamental underlying mindset here because that's the problem. The, it is. The, the targeting of women. Life is not valued. Women are not valued. Poor and you people see, are not valued. Poor people are not valued. You see actually a lot of sex-selective abortion in India where they're getting rid of the, the yeah. women. And research has actually found that there are 60 million missing women in India. These are lives that are just discarded because they're female. Yeah. And so there's a bigger picture here, respect for the dignity of human life the dignity of the human person and for human sexuality that needs to be taken into account. Absolutely, a lot of facets to this mm -hmm. thing. All right, that's it for this week on Heroic Media. Please join us next week for all the up-to-date news on the pro-life issues that matter to you. Please feel free to write to us with any comments, questions, or news tips at news at heroicmedia.org. And please visit our website at heroicmedianews.org where you can check out more stories like the ones we discussed on this episode. That's it for today. Until next time, keep us in your prayers. God bless. Keep us in your prayers. God bless.